you got your Raspberry Pi 3 all set up and ready to go with RetroPie, and you got your retro games on there, but there is one problem, and that is the looks. It looks pretty basic at this point, but there's an easy way to fix that. Let's see how we can turn this into this. Let's get to it. You tell me I look good. Welcome folks, my name is Stix Bleich, and if you like video game and tech related videos and this is your first time watching, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you get notified when new content gets put out. Today we are going to be taking a look at an NES inspired case by a company called Retro Flag. This is the NES Pi case, or the NES Pi case, and essentially what it is, it is a NES theme case for your Raspberry Pi. The great thing about this particular case is the fact that it looks and feels very, very similar to an NES Classic or an NES Mini. So size-wise, you're getting a very, very compact and very, very sleek case for your Raspberry Pi, which isn't saying much because even the basic plastic one will be small and sleek. But the main advantage that you get is that on the interior, it actually has some circuitry to reroute a lot of your USB ports and even your Ethernet port. This allows you to have two USBs on the front of the device next to a working power and reset switch. Now the reset switch I will tell you is a hard reset so it becomes less useful. Essentially it cuts the power momentarily to your Raspberry Pi and then when you let go of it it reinitiates power flow to it. Taking a look around the outside on the front of course we have our power and reset switch right next to two USB 2.0s that are being rerouted from your Pi to mimic a player one and player two slot. The other thing as we lift this flap up is going to be our relocated ethernet port as well as additional two USBs. This can be very useful if you are playing more than a two player game or if you have other things such as a USB flash drive that you would like to attach to your Pi and you already populated your two USBs on the front for controllers. Swinging around to the right hand side, we have our memory card slot which goes directly into the Pi. This doesn't get rerouted at all, so on the interior when we were looking in you would see the Raspberry Pi in that particular position. And as we travel around back we see our micro USB in. This is actually going to a dedicated board that splits off power into the power switch up into the front as well as the reset switch. Up top we have our HDMI as well as our audio out slash video out assuming you have the proper cabling for it. On the right hand side we have nothing but on the bottom of the case we do have a little trap door if you will that can be used to store more micro SD cards. This is the primary use for it so it mimics the expansion port on the NES, the original NES, which is a very nice touch so if you have an additional SD card or if you're making one of these for a friend, I highly recommend if you're building a retro pie setup for a friend, give them an extra SD card with the image on there. So if they happen to bump the reset switch and corrupt the SD card, they already have a backup of it underneath. Now looking on the inside, we can see our ethernet cable that is going to where our ethernet port will be on a Raspberry Pi as well as a single USB that is going to the Raspberry Pi to break out into these two separate boards. The other thing that we will notice is a GPIO header. What the GPIO header is doing here, it is supplying power to the Raspberry Pi Model 3 through the GPIO pins. The other thing that we notice here is two GPIO headers. What these two GPIO headers are, they are a positive and a negative. This is for a fan, which can be located at the top if you really wanted to put one in there. However, if you're so inclined, you can in fact use one of these dual fans for the Raspberry Pi Model 3, Model 2, so on and so forth. It does in fact fit in this case, assuming that you align it correctly, and it plugs into those GPIO headers and it will sit in there and this drastically reduces your heat output or gets the airflow going in there, so to, for lack of a better term. And there are some minor vents in here, so it does have somewhere to go, mainly out the bottom of the unit. And I can tell you firsthand that this makes a big difference when you're playing like PlayStation 1 games, for example, 
because that heat does build up on the chip and this is an easy way to get that off of there. This is the exact setup I used in my recent SNES Classic versus Raspberry Pi 3 running RetroPie comparison video. If you wanna take a look at that video, it can be found up here in the card. All of this comes together in a nice sleek little package that anyone would be proud to set on their entertainment stand. And believe me, when you get this all put together, you're gonna to have a lot of people asking where you got it. A link for this can be found in the description below. Thank you very much for watching, folks. And if you like this video, be sure to give me a like and tell me down in the comments below what you use as a case for your Raspberry Pi Model 3. And also be sure to let me know if you would like to see other case reviews like this for a Raspberry Pi in the future. Although I will tell you, we are gonna to get to a Super Nintendo inspired case very, very, very shortly. Thank you very much for watching, folks, and I will see you in the next video. Take care. They tell me I look good.